Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today I'm doing something I haven't done in quite some time, and I'm reviewing a Cyberverse Warrior class figure. Uh, I had stopped doing this for a while because, honestly, they just those videos just flopped horribly. I mean, just nobody really seemed to want to see those. But with kind of the renewed hype around Cyberverse because of the deluxes, the fact that the series, you know, is coming to an end, and the fact that the new warriors seem to be much more in line with, like, the Robots in Disguise warriors, and just a lot more quality, it's kind of renewed my interest in reviewing these. So today, we are looking at the second Warrior Class Starscream. It's an all-new mold based off of his Cybertronian mode that I believe it's the same one you saw in, like, the early flashback episodes. Don't quote me on that, though. Might be a new design. Uh, I do know that Starscream himself did not show up in the final season of the show in any sort of Cybertronian all mode. And I'm not going to say any more than that because a lot of people haven't seen the end yet. I don't want to spoil it. So yeah, I mean, I think it's just a good time to maybe start taking a look at Cyberverse again as it's doing its swan song and then disappearing into the void like so many shows before it. So now if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at Starscream's packaging. We'll open it up, see his instructions, then we'll take a look at Starscream himself in both his vehicle and robot modes. We'll be doing a lot of comparisons and group shots today to see just how far they've come since the initial Starscream toy they made. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Starscream, he comes in the kind of newly re-sub-branded, it's Transformers Bumblebee Cyberverse Adventures, which is just a real mouthful to say Transformer Cyberverse. Oh, by the way, Bumblebee's still a thing. Look, guys, Bumblebee. I mean, honestly, he's not even that big of a character compared to the first two seasons. I think Hot Rod really steals the show in season three, but eh, what do I know? I'm not a marketing team. So Starscream, he has a new special attack called Star Seeker Missile, which is pretty cool. And then right here, you have this little emblem that says Cybertronian Mode. And I'm imagining that that is included on all of the Warrior class toys that are reimagined with a Cybertronian alt mode. Uh, I didn't pick the other ones up that I'm aware of, which are Bumblebee and Megatron, and that's because those are simply just slight retools of their original Warrior class toys, which are honestly just utter trash. <laughs> like, I just, they're not worth adding to my collection another time over. Though I will say the double fusion cannon on the Megatron is pretty cool. But anyway, you see Starscream, he's kind of squatted down a bit, I guess, to get him to fit in the bubble. So he's going to be a bigger warrior class toy than we're used to. That's always nice. Uh, I have this artwork of him, which I'm not sure if that's the same one from the first toy or not. I can't remember. Uh, right here, you have his renders. It only takes five steps to transform, so he's not complicated at all. But hopefully they make up for that lack of complexity with some nice posability and a decent old mode. Uh, this shows you how to activate his little Star Seeker missile thing. Uh, I really like the render they got of him. Looks like he's flying, kind of talking down to an enemy, which is very Starscream-esque. Uh, right here, his function is scheming second in command, which, you know, shocker, right? And yeah, that's about all there is to see on the packaging. You get the, you know, big three Decepticons right there. Yeah, that's a bit. Right here, Starscream's tiny little instruction book. I'll open this thing up. Got this front part that just demonstrates how to activate and reset his little Star Seeker missile action feature. And on this side, just have his uh, quick and dirty transformation to his Cybertronian jet mode. That's it. And here we have Starscream's vehicle mode. See, it's just very interesting, very unique Cybertronian jet type vehicle really haven't seen this design before. So what I find interesting about it is they have the cockpit, which is a fairly standard jet cockpit shape, but then you have these wings that sweep well forward past it. And I think that's a really interesting take. So I, I really want to give them points for this kind of creativity and doing something new here. Uh, you can see the cockpit's got the clear orange plastic, which is very evocative of the G1 toy. He's got clear orange missiles here on the underside. Now the underside is not pretty. Whole bunch, I mean, it's like the entire top half of Star Scream just hanging out there. But you can see his missiles there. Everything does at least tab into place so nothing's flopping around. 
and you can see his robot feet and shins on the top, but they, you know, they kind of work because they make up part of the jet body. They just look like kind of the main fuselage. Did I say that right? Fuselage? Fuselage? Really need to brush up on my aircraft history. Uh, and then the other feet become boosters, which is something pretty common for Starscream toys. So overall, I, I like the design of this. It's simple, but at least from the top, which is I mean, really the only angle that matters on a jet transformer, let's be honest, uh, I think it looks really, really good. Unlike these three atrociously bad things. So I have the original warrior class, which is like a box with wings and a nose cone and just all sorts of gappiness. You have the Ultra class, which, I mean, just, you got half the robot just hanging out there from the top. It's really, really awful jet mode. And then you even have the little uh, Allspark armor class here, which again, you just got a whole bunch of the robot mode hanging out there. So all three of these are just horrendously bad jet modes. Now, to be fair, the new toy isn't trying to be a realistic Earth jet. But even so, it's just a much better looking vehicle, period. Whether it's an alien design or not, you just don't have all this gappiness, all these blatant robot parts just hanging out at the top where you can see them. Uh, I have not been a fan of the Starscream molds for this toy line so far. You know, up until now, they've, they've all been really, really bad, especially in the jet mode. The jet mode is always the worst part. All right, let's transform our guy now. It's pretty simple. So these forward sweeping wingtips, you're just gonna go ahead and fold them back and actually tab into the larger wings here, like so. And this nose cone, you're just gonna kind of pull it up and out of the way. His feet, you want to lift up like so, straighten them out that way. Go ahead and tab his arms from the other side of the wings. Turn his head around like that. He looks mad. And you're gonna bring this nose cone up, but not all the way, just to the point where it kind of stops because you push it further, it activates his gimmick. All right. And here you have it. This is Starscream's new robot mode, which looks very much like a standard one. Do you not want to stand up anymore? Right, row. Might be having a looseness issue already. All right, so it's the robot mode. Uh, I will say it's quite well painted for a Cyberverse Warrior toy. You got paint on the shins, the feet, the forearms, and hands are actually painted separate colors, so that's cool. Uh, lots of paint on the head. Let's give you a look at his face there. Very cartoony, he looks real mad, bro. Which, if you watch cartoon, tell why he's so mad. Uh, got Decepticon symbols and red striping on the underside of his wings. And the back is pretty clean. Obviously you got the nose cone in the back issue, but that's, I mean, that's just become kind of a staple of Starscream toys at this point. You do have this interesting thing going on with his legs where it looks like he has steps inside the backs of his shins there. So weird, They're very, very hollow. All right, now unfortunately his arms, they can raise up and go down and stuff, and they do bend at the elbow, but they can't go out at all. There's no room because of these. Uh, the legs are actually very poseable. The hips are on ball joints, and you do have a single bend at the knee. No ankle articulation, but I wouldn't hold my breath for that. And I'm just now noticing, and I don't know if it's gonna be like the summer copy, his knees are quite weak. A little bit of force, and he wants to just bend them back, so. Oh, I didn't notice that before. I may have to take back some of the nice things I was going to say about this. But let's go ahead and show off the little gimmick, right? So it's nose kind of thing. You just push it, and it deploys his weapons forward. So you can have him doing this kind of all-out attack thing. Now, obviously, these missiles being on the underside of his wings, I think they're meant to look like they're attached to his arms. And when they're down, it kind of gives that look. That they're attached to his upper arms like they typically are, but once they deploy, it's pretty clear that their attachment point is up by his shoulders, so 
kind of breaks the illusion there. Uh, so, not really a fan of that. Uh, and overall, I'd say the robot mode, I would not call it impressive, but I will say it is one of the better warrior class molds. And here's the mold mates again. Again, original warrior, ultra class, all spark armor. Now, none of these robot modes are what I would call good, right? They all have their issues. Uh, the old warrior one, I've said before, is one of my least favorite warrior class toys in the entire line. In fact, one of my least favorite Transformers toys, period. Uh, the only posability this guy has, really, is his arms. They can move around and stuff, which is cool. Then the legs, they can bend, like, together, but... That's, that's about it. Like, you can't lift one up without the other. There's no knee bend or anything. And the fact that they're totally unpainted makes this thing just kind of an eyesore. And then his weird gimmick just makes his hip stick out way further than his chest and everything. So it's like his spine is broken. Uh, the Ultra one, I like the look of it. It's kind of an imposable brick. You can move the arms up and down and bend the elbows. That's about it. This Allspark armor on, while not very well painted, it is actually fairly poseable. Arms have full posability, the legs do, the knees bend, all that. So that's just a little action figure. He's actually got some charm to him. So, you know, you just, I don't think you're gonna win with Starscream for Cyberverse. Unless they continue their deluxe assortment, which I don't know if they will. Because by the time they release the end of that first uh, McAdam collection. I mean, Severus will have been over for a while, the cartoon. So maybe they'll do another wave, but I kind of doubt it. I think they're just moving on now. You know, the next show we have is actually based on Generations for a change. So I'm not sure what the future holds. Um, I will point out that this guy's colors are noticeably brighter than the other three, and I think that's more in line with Something I noticed uh, with the deluxe toys, they seem to be going for that more uh, cartoon accurate cell shaded look, which tends to use a brighter color palette. So if you want a toy that looks like it came out of the cartoon, it is good for that. He does use the right shade of gray and everything. Though I have to say this more metallic silvery gray has its own charm too. So should you get this toy? <sighs> <laughs> I guess that depends. If you don't already have a Cyberverse Starscream toy, and you want one that looks halfway like it belongs with the deluxe figures, he's pretty good for that. You know, he does have, I, I do, I will say I do very much like his vehicle mode. I really like the original design that they gave it. I think it's way stronger than the vehicle mode of the other three, even if it's not an Earth-based mode. Or, again, I don't even know if this one ever showed up in the cartoon. I could be wrong. Maybe maybe in the flashbacks they showed that design. Uh, but I think, you know, in a static pose, he looks fine. And he will make a good representation for your Cyberverse shell. And, you know, being warrior class toy, he's not very expensive. So, I would pick him up if you just need a decent-looking Starscream to display. Uh... The toy doesn't have a lot going on as far as functionality. Like, he's got the little gimmick, which, you know, if you're shopping for a small kid, he's fine. Uh, my five-year-old would probably love this toy. But from a collector standpoint, again, he works as a display piece, and that's about it. Now, if you do have the Ultra Class toy, I just, I don't know. It, I, I Something about it I like. I very much like the dynamic look of that toy. So if you already have that one, may I be just not even bother buying this new warrior? He may not be very show accurate, but he looks really cool. But I don't know, what do you all think? Could you see yourselves picking out the new uh, Warrior Cyberverse Starscream? He is undoubtedly an improvement over the original Warrior. You gotta give him that. So if you are looking for something that scale, would this satisfy that itch? Or is it just not your thing, too cheap? I mean, I could understand that too. Especially with the super hollow legs, those look awful. So yeah, just let me know what you guys think in the comments section. 
If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at Warrior Star Screen 2.0. And with that said, I will see you next time.